Good evening. Welcome to Viking Genetics webinar, where tonight we're going to learn more about the latest release of our side directory for the spring with new bulls and updated information on the existing bulls across our Viking Red, Viking Holstein and Viking Jersey lineup. Uh, joining us tonight, um, we have uh, my partner in crime, Eric Thompson, who's our senior breeding advisor uh, and account manager. Darren Maloney, who's our breeding advisor in uh, Western Victoria and uh, coming to us um, from Denmark. We have Peter Larson, who's senior breeding manager and product manager for Viking Jersey and Hannah. I, I'm, I should have checked this in the preamble, but are you in Sweden tonight or are you in Denmark tonight? I'm in Sweden. Hannah Driscoll is joining us from Sweden. She's our Viking Holstein product manager. So uh, welcome to everybody uh, on our team and um, Welcome to all our uh, guests um, viewing uh, across Australia and uh, wherever else you may be peering in from. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get going. The webinar is being recorded and at the conclusion of the webinar, all participants, all registered uh, participants will receive an email um, uh, from us. It will have a link in it where you can go back and review the information from, uh, the, uh, from the webinar and replay it. If you're um, three or four stubbies into your Matilda's party tonight, then you may want to be able to come back and, and watch this, uh, you know, with, with a clear mind uh, in the morning. Um, all participants uh, in the webinar are muted, so uh, we can't hear you speak, but there is a chat function um, in, the, uh, in the live storm uh, uh, screen. Please put your questions into the chat. We will endeavour to answer the questions as we go, if uh, if we can. Um, but if we don't get to your question, if we can't get your question answered as we go through, uh, we'll certainly follow you up and and make sure you get uh, clear answers to all that you uh, all that you ask. Uh, we do hopefully have time for questions and answers at the end, so um, we'll uh, we'll try to get through uh, in good time. Um, so moving straight ahead, one of the things that we must um, make a mention of as we, we, we start for participants, those who have registered, and we're actually being a little bit generous for those who have registered, but maybe are distracted by other events that, that may be um, are being broadcast this evening. If you uh, do get through the webinar and you can place an order, um, the semen order needs to be placed by 12 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, the 17th of August. But if you place your order as a participant in the webinar, you will receive a 10% discount. So um, if, you, if you're looking at me live tonight, you, you know you need to uh, get that in on the orders at vikinggenetics.com.au email address. If you're looking at me through bleary eyes uh, tomorrow morning, um, you'll need to uh, view it quickly and, and act quickly. The conditions of the offer uh, is that it's only uh, that the discount's only available to those who are attending. As I say, we're extending that to those who, who view the webinar on a delay. Uh, but the orders must be in by the cutoff time. Uh, the orders need to be delivered and invoiced by September 31, 2023, and the 10 percent discount is applied to the RRP as is stated on our website and in our catalogue. Um, each order needs to contain uh, details of the account title, postal address, contact phone number, so that we can follow you up and uh, make sure we've got complete clarity around that order. But I hope there's information for you this evening where uh, it, uh, it does inspire you to take action and, uh, and order um, either one of our existing bulls or one of the new bulls that you'll see uh, exclusively here tonight. So, Without further ado, we're going to get the ball rolling uh, with our Viking Red offering, and um, we'll have a uh, to take the lead uh, on the Viking Red. We'll have Eric Thompson uh, ably assisted, uh, also by Peter Larson. So we're going to kick it off, and uh, we'll roll into uh, Vimo, VR Vimo, and um, over to you, Eric. Okay, thank you, Jim, and uh, welcome to everyone. And um... I too look forward to watching the Matildas tonight. Uh, so let's get stuck straight into this. With Vimo, he's recently uh, got a proof in Australia, albeit quite early at this stage with 33 daughters in nine herds. But uh, 
very respectful BPI 230. And I guess his outstanding feature is what you have there. Uh, he's very elite for overall type and mammary, and he's number one for overall type. Um, you know, normally I wouldn't get too excited about that stuff with Holstein and Jersey because they've been doing that for years. But I think with the red breeds, it's it's very it's a very good thing to have. We can do with more of that because um, at the end of the day, you still you do need your type, you do need the capacity, you need your feet and legs, you need your udders to carry all that production around. So excellent choice for uh, tidying out cows and, and providing cows with lovely strong frames. Now, there's a lot of daughters in Scandinavia, so I'll hand pass to you right now, Peter, so you can have further comment on that. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Uh, VRVMO um, has uh, these uh, um, trademarks that uh, Eric just mentioned, and uh, not a surprise to us that uh, he actually is a very, very good confirmation bull. The um, Body capacity is exceptionally good. Feet and legs are, are good. And uh, again, the others are exceptional. When looking at the, the dam, when looking at uh, the, the herd he comes from, it is not a surprise. He's coming from uh, Stagger Have a Guard. Uh, they have a long tradition for breeding and they have actually been breeding bulls, uh, both the uh, Reds and, and, and Holsteins for a number of years. And they also, milk some jerseys. So they have all three uh, breeds present. Uh, the dam of uh, Vimo, uh, Stagger Havagard, uh, Vildja and Daughter, uh, she's been uh, ending five, three or five days lactations with uh, 12,100 kilos uh, per lactation with 506 in fat and 3.79 in protein. Um, he's a, a, a very good sustainability type of bull. Um, and uh, there is a lot of daughters in it proof. If you go to the next slide, you'll see a couple of daughters. Um, and um, uh, in, in total, in his proof, we have 3,200 daughters in his production proof. We have uh, 1,600 daughters classified. So very, very high reliable um, uh, proof on, on this top daughter proven. I think, is there one more daughter? Nope. Uh, Vimo? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, the, there is a daughter back on the original slide. Okay, but uh, but still a uh, very, very good confirmation. And as uh, Eric mentioned, uh, this uh, is something that we have highlighted for the other breeds. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, and, and now we also have some Red Bulls that actually breed very, very good confirmation. This Peter, was Eric, uh, just just go yeah. back. Um, did you say twelve and a half thousand kilograms of milk over five lactations for the dam of Vimo? Uh, uh, twelve thousand one hundred. Twelve thousand one hundred uh, per, per per three or five day, but but still a very high production, uh, yeah. considering a, a fat percentage over five and a protein percentage of uh, three point eight. That, that's and power. I forgot to mention that the, the dam was scored very good, uh, 89. Um, uh, so so um, the pedigree is uh, definitely uh, good in, in this. And uh, he has been breeding some very, very good sons and daughters for us that has also been included in our breeding program. Okay. Very good. We'll move on to Vesti, shall we, fellas? Yes. yes. Okay, well, I'll kick that off as a, uh, <clears throat> okay, we have a Vivo Sun in Vesti. We have quite a few of these, and Vesti is also very special with a very high NTM and a very good BPI. Um, he is plus 47 kilos of fat plus protein in Australia and very respectful overall type of 105 and 106 for mammary. Um, a similar bull to Vimo really uh, is, is this, the Vimo is showing very consistent type. So we've got a really strong lineup of, of beautiful bulls really to, to really lift the level, I guess, and appeal of red cows uh, in Australia with this sort of bulls. I mean, if you look at that dam there, what a beautiful cow. Um, I'll hand straight to you, Peter, now. You'll have something to say about Vesti. Yes, one of our good uh, Vimo sons, uh, he is one of our older genomic bulls. Uh, we expect him to be daughter proven within the next nine months. So uh, next year in May, we expect him to be daughter proven and uh, looks very promising. Um, 
Uh, we have written a, a little about the dam of Westy. Uh, she scored uh, very good 87. Um, you can see her here. Uh, a strong cow with lots of capacity, also like uh, Westy breeds, um, and also what um, uh, Vimo was uh, was breeding uh, shown before. She's a throwback daughter, and um, she has been milking uh, uh, more or less the same amount of milk as uh, the dam of uh, Vimo, but in this case a little bit lower in fat and protein. But we expect daughters to be high in uh, fat uh, percentage uh, as well. Um, I would say in this case also a profitability uh, uh, profile. Uh, Westy is breeding um, more or less the same with the focus on both production and, um, and um, fertility, health, uh, longevity and the, the good uh, confirmation. If you look at the linears, looks very, very good on uh, uh, We Are Westy. Yes. Okay. What about uh, Flirt PP? Now, uh, this is a sire we brought in earlier this year. He's actually mahogany. People have gone, ah, he's black bull. Yes, he, he looks black, but he is a red bull. There's nothing strange in his pedigree, and you can be assured you'll get a lot of red, red and white calves from Flirt PP. He, uh, he, he did calculate exceptionally well to BPI with a 288 BPI and he's plus 60 kilos of fat plus protein uh, with exceptional uh, percentages, both 0.50 and 0.50, 0.54 for fat percentage. And um, they will be a smaller frame cow, as you can see this smaller, but all in re all well balanced to, uh, to go with his chest and body. You have a smaller frame, generally the negative for chest and body too. But as long as that all lines up, you have a smaller cow, but still plenty of strength there. So don't be frightened of that. All health traits are positive. Carving ease is good and milkability and temperament are very good as well. So you want to get some pole genes into your herd, one hit and all your calves will be polled. I'd recommend go for flirt. Yeah, and the Flirt PP is one of the breed leaders for 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 some traits, especially for the the protein percentage, for the fat percentage, he is extremely high. Will breed daughters that uh, will have uh, notable or uh, higher percentages than what you normally see. But uh, what needs to be mentioned and relates to uh, the body and body capacity is uh, the safe feed. He's a breed leader for, for safe feed in the, the red breed. He, he is exceptionally high on that, but that relates to a more medium sized uh, um, stature uh, daughter, uh, um, as you can also see in the linears. Uh, so normally there is a, a close correlation between the size and uh, the safe feed. They will be very, very feed, feed efficient. Uh, Dam has ended her first uh, three or five day lactation with 10,200 kilos, 4.4 fat and 3.9 uh, protein. Um, so uh, a, a good sustainability profile uh, where, where a safe feed, feed efficiency needs to be highlighted. And then a comment to the, the color of Flirt PP. This color that you can see here is actually more dark, more black than what uh, he, how he is in reality. He is actually dark red brown. Uh, when I go to see him in the, in the barn here at the bull station where I'm sitting. Okay, excellent. Well, that leads us into another uh, another Vima, another uh, V son as I call him, another Vima son V Ma. This one's been exceptionally popular for us earlier this year because he also has a beautiful NTM and BPI, very strong production, very strong um, confirmation and very strong udders. Teeth length is excellent, 104, uh, a strong four attachments on BPI at 107. I must mention that all these health traits are positive and he's an excellent sire carving ease bull. Uh, very good to use on maiden heifers and you can even use him conventional on maiden heifers as well. Uh, um, Eric, can I just... Uh, I've just had a, a, a request if you could mention the kilos of fat and protein of the bulls, if you've got it there. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, protein kilos for VMAR is 14, and fat kilos is 46. 
on, on, on BPI. Okay. So I won't labour too long because we're running out of time on the red. So that's all I've got to say on VMA. We might uh, jump ahead there, uh, Eric. Uh, the next bull we have is is a new bull for this spring, a new entrant. So let's have a little chat chat about Best Up. Okay, let's have a look at Best Up. Uh, a new sire without cross opportunities, production lifter for milk and components. Um, he's like I said, positive for milk and fat and uh, protein kilos. I don't have the actual kilos on him in front of me because I haven't got his BPI, but I've got his NTM. But quite solidly uh, uh, forward moving with, with your production. The health profile is very nice as his uh, fertility and uh, longevity, utter health is very good. He's just average for stature, but has plenty of chest and body. And he's really good for adding teat length, 113 on NTM. And the front teats are nicely in at 102 and brings the rear teats out. And like I said, uh, a nice um, outcross opportunity for the spring. He's by a bull called Boost out of a VR up, uh, who was an unto. Uh, so it goes right back to an Uden. Many of you had Udens many years ago, who was a, a, an exceptional bull here in Australia as well with wonderful udders. So great opportunity there with Best Up. Uh, okay. Vario, um, I'm going fairly quick, Jim. Vario, okay. is, is that okay? Yes, bro. Right? Yep. Uh, another another really good bull, V-Sun, doing a great job in Australia as well. He's not so high in production. We do have his data here on BPI. Uh, currently, with just 56 daughters in 14 herds in Australia, nine for protein and two for fat. But there again, they should be cows that are going to last a long time because he has overall types 110, which is phenomenal, and others are superb at 107. And uh, the front teats are great at 102, and he'll bring those rear teats out again and maintain teat length. So uh, maintain. And 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 Vario has uh, also Faber, which was used in Australia in his pedigree, and it goes right back to Tosico, who left a, a lot of fantastic red cows many years, 10 or more years ago. Many of you, all, anyone listening here from some time ago will remember Tosico. So a really good pedigree there. Eric, I think uh, I think uh, Vario was supposed to follow Vimar and uh, we've got a, someone's moved a slide out of order. But now we're going to another new bull for uh, for the spring and that's VIPP, another uh, PPA2 entrant to the team. Okay, so YPP, I can get him. So... Yes, this bull's interesting. He's a pole bull, and he really struck us because he's a beautiful cut of a bull. I love. He, he's got a lovely. Uh, he, he's just a nice type of bull. Um, if you have a look at him, he's got a lovely flank on him that looks very soft in the hide. Beautiful head and muzzle, um, and he's fully poled, of course. Uh, he will bring your stature right down, but you won't lose any strength. His feet and legs are quite outstanding at 119. And that's more so because he cleans the bone right up on the legs. He's 119 for bone and hot quality. Now, I don't mind them being more coarse for our conditions, being more robust, but we also need to balance things out. We can't keep breeding for more and more strength. Sometimes you have to add some a, a little bit more dairiness, and uh, YPP will do that. And his health's very good, as is his milking speed and temperament. So another great opportunity for uh, nice pole, fully polled genetics calves in your herd. Our last bull on the red team for this evening. This okay, morning. Union P. He's been very popular for us. He's got fantastic production, calculates well to Australia, 31 kilos plus for both fat and protein with 400 litres of milk, 0.38% protein and 0.2% fat. So that's super. Mammary system is, is good here in Australia. A BPI of 269 and a production index of 239. What the information doesn't tell you in Australia is that uh, he is exceptional for rear udder capacity. Rear udder width is 2.1 deviation stronger. You need to take that into account and we can do with that in the reds too because 60% of your production is in your rear quarters and he's going to give plenty uh, width in the rear udder to hold um, good amounts of milk, which he does and his milking speed is super at 2.3 deviation stronger. Uh, so what? Uh, and he's been proven to be very, very good carving ease. People are reusing him because they just pop out of heifers beautifully, and they're lovely calves. 
Excellent. Thanks, Eric. And uh, that's the, the last of our uh, reds in this evening's presentation. Of course, there are plenty more reds in our uh, team and the catalogue uh, is uh, at the printer uh, at the end of this week. Um, but people will be able to see an online version of the catalogue uh, straight away next week and uh, look at the entire team. But for the moment, we'll move uh, through to our uh, Viking Holstein offering and uh, welcome uh, to the to the uh, the microphone, if you like, uh, Hannah Driscoll, um, uh, sitting there in Sweden. I, I point out that uh, if the Matildas win tonight, we're still friends uh, with Sweden. Um, if we uh, are unsuccessful against the Lionesses tonight, we have to play off for third against the Swedes. So let's uh, let's welcome Hannah to the microphone while we're still friends. Thank so you we'll very kick much. Off there, we'll kick off there with Clem. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, the first bull uh, I want to present uh, to you today is uh, VH uh, Klim, and uh, he a is a VH Caliph son out of a Semino cow, and uh, he has a really high uh, uh, yield index uh, consisting of both uh, good uh, milk volume and high levels of components, and he's uh, exceptionally high in level uh, of protein uh, and one of... Uh, our breed leaders for uh, protein percent. Uh, he has an overall nice uh, health profile without uh, any big uh, faults and breeds for healthy cows with good longevity. Uh, and he's uh, particularly strong in general health and uh, hoof health and also uh, other health. Uh, he breeds uh, robust cows that are not too tall and with uh, strength in uh, body and rump and with excellent feet and legs. Uh, and he will also give you cows with uh, appealing uh, conformation, strong uh, appealing other conformation with strong ligaments and good teeth size and, uh, uh, and good teeth placement. Uh, and in my mind, uh, VH Klim has an, an easy to use profile uh, with uh, many strengths and uh, suits well in uh, different production systems uh, um, as well. And um, uh, his uh, dam is now a few months into her third lactation and uh, her average production is 11,600 kilos of milk with uh, 4.2 fat and 3.8 uh, protein. And uh, currently she's producing 50 kilos uh, of milk per day. And uh, in her first lactation, she was classified 84. Uh, and this cow is also uh, the dam mm -hmm. of the other bull in, used uh, in our breeding program. Uh, he's a sire of son now. Uh, and the maternal grand dam uh, has also a high production, 10.4, uh, 10,400 kilos of milk in average with uh, high levels of solids, uh, 4.7 fat and 3.6% 3 protein. Excellent. Um, I'd just like to add, he's uh, plus 27 kilos of protein for Australia uh, with a whopping 0 0.60 protein percent. Little wonder when you hear what his dam has produced. He's got a BPI 448. And I'd just like to run a few numbers that so many farmers are looking for here. Overall type 110, memory 101, dairy strength is, is quite hard to get in. Holstein's 102, rump composite 104, feet and legs 109. Then you've got stature 98 and then chest 104, body depth 101, muzzle 104. They're all greater than his stature. And that's when you get power. If you can do that and uh, and, and then, and then uh, that's when you start to get strength in your cows. Bring the stature down, more chest, more body. That's a power bull. And just to boot, his teat length is 104 and rear teats 94 for placement. So that's perfect. I think this is a bull, Eric, that... Um um people have really started to discover this year and uh, he's, he's been a strong seller for us uh, throughout the autumn and um you know there's there's no slowing down on that so um as you say there's there's lots to like about this bull and hannah there's lots to like about the cow family behind this bull and i think it's mm. a bull that people can use uh, with great confidence um we'll uh, we'll move forward uh, to a bull that anyone um in in uh, the holstein business um, will be familiar with by now, and that's VH Ascari. He's been very popular for us here in Australia. But uh, over to you first, Hannah, and uh, tell us uh, tell us what you can what you can from uh, behind the 
behind the ball. Yeah, Ascari, yeah, as you said, Jim, uh, next ball with a very nice overall profile uh, and easy to, to like and uh, uh, strong health profile uh, and helps to improve both the fertility and the hoof health. Uh, easy carvings and uh, also nice number on the production traits and improves both milk kilos and levels of fat and protein. Uh, once again, a bull with uh, breeding for strong cows with good body and, and conformation and uh, good feet and legs and uh, very good and strongly attached uh, others. Um, He's uh, coming from a, a strong uh, cow family as well. And uh, his dam has an average production of 13,100 kilos of milk with 4.0 fat and uh, uh, 3.6 uh, protein, which equals to more than 1,000 kilos of fat and protein per year. And uh, she's classified 85 uh, in total and 87 points uh, on others in her first lactation. Uh, and uh, his maternal granddam, also a uh, very high producing cow, producing an average 15,500 kilos of milk. Uh, and uh, a good looking cow as well, uh, classified 84. Excellent. Um, I must add in Australia, he's a good positive milk bull, 29 kilos of fat and 25 of protein. Carving ease is a bit of a sensation. He's got 1,100 carvers in Australia now to date, and there's a lot more to come. Very popular, 104, so he's definitely suitable for maiden heifers. And uh, he's got that good teeth placement of 101 front and 97 rear, which is a bonus as well. And his management traits are exceptional also. I think uh, I think too, Eric. Darren, um, you've, you've uh, been able to use this bull quite uh, successfully for customers uh, focusing in on that gestation length. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um... At minus eight, um, he's been, uh, yeah, the cows have been coming out early, which is good, especially in your second round, sort of brings it back and and uh, brings the cows back into the uh, into the program a little bit better. Uh, one thing I'd like to say as well is um, we've got, we're getting, uh, doing some genomic tests. Uh, a lot of uh, Ascari daughters are coming back uh, really good with scores mid 300s uh, up to about the 450 mark. Um, their statures are between 95 and 100, and most of them positive chest and uh, body depth. And uh, yeah, good production figures or genomic production figures on his daughters as well, um, with the highest ones up over the 200 um, ASI mark. So um, all the genomic numbers are backing up his, uh, his actual proof as well, so. I think, I think it's fair to say that um... The genomics uh, supports the fact the bull's stamping a type into his progeny, but I think also the, the customers are happy with the calves. They're born easy, they're born early, they get up, they grow, they, they go like stinks straight away. Um, so, you know, he's a real customer satisfaction bull for us. Mm -hmm. Would you agree there, Darren? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had, um, yeah, had people come back um, and, and uh, buy a lot um, based on the calves and the yearlings that they've got over the last yep. two years. So. Excellent. Okay, we must uh, keep an eye on time and we'll move through uh, to uh, our, our next Holstein ball and that's VH Swish. Uh, and um, he, he's also been a very high profile, high NTM ball coming into the team. Uh, Hannah. Yeah, yes. VH uh, Swish uh, is um, uh, close to uh, three and a half years old uh, approximately and he keeps a very high NTM level on plus uh, 37. Uh, and is still uh, one of our top ranking uh, bulls. And um, he uh, will give you a very nice uh, combination of both production, health and uh, strong conformation. Uh, he has a really high uh, yield index and he is uh, excellent when it comes to solids. Uh, once again, a bull with high numbers for uh, both uh, fat percentage and uh, protein percentage. And uh, he will give your daughters producing many kilos of uh, uh, fat and protein. Uh, he has an uh, overall excellent uh, health profile uh, all the way through and uh, uh, transmits uh, good fertility, other health, general health, and also uh, hoof health. Uh, and he has uh, high numbers uh, on calving, calving traits 
uh, and uh, he has been a very popular uh, bull and heavily used uh, and he has a lot of calves uh, born already and high reliability uh, on his uh, calving index here in uh, the Nordic countries. Um, he will give you daughters with a lot of strength in, uh, in body and rump and uh, the daughters, they are expected to be uh, medium sized uh, and uh, at the same time have a good uh, width and uh, depth in the bodies. Uh, he uh, will give uh, very nice uh, feet and legs and uh, in combination with well-balanced udders uh, with strong attachments, then strong uh, udder cleft and good teeth size. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, cows with uh, good longevity and uh, uh, also uh, easy to handle with a nice uh, temperament. Uh, and the dam of uh, VH uh, Swish uh, has an average production of uh, close to uh, 10,000 kilos of milk with uh, really, really high levels of fat, 5.3% uh, fat and 3.9% uh, uh, protein. And uh, uh, she is classified uh, 82. And uh, we have uh, purchased a few sons uh, after Swish as well, and uh, the first one is ready uh, to be released as uh, Cyro Sun in our home market uh, this month. And uh, we have a few more uh, to look forward to as well. I was going to ask you about uh, Swish as a uh, as a sire of sons. I did notice uh, some some young bulls coming into the program. Some of them are missing their horns, in fact. Uh, um, yes, so, uh, a very mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, Balls to come through the system from Swish, so it's a good opportunity for customers to get those those um, high quality daughters in their herds so right away as well. Eric, you've been uh, able to to make good use of Swish uh, over the previous couple of seasons. Yeah, farmers love them. Um, they just really like the calves. You can see it in the bull, the lovely body capacity and lovely flank on him. You can see the power through that bull. You can tell he's got a wonderful muzzle. And, if, uh, and it'll be he's been a heavy use sire again this year and will be this spring. Uh, because the calves have got plenty of style. But anyway, I've got no more to add to that because Hannah's covered the lot. Well done, Hannah. And we'll go to Larson. Now, Larson's a bull we've grabbed new for this spring. Just offers something different. On our system on NTME 79 for stature, which is two deviations shorter. Now, if people want smaller Holsteins, you've got to use bulls that are a bit negative on the graph. People aren't used to that. But that's what you've got to do. If you want to bring that size down, you got to do it. And if you look at his BPI, he's 93 for stature, yet 103 for chest, uh, 99 for body depth. Uh, so they're all higher than his stature. So they're smaller cows, yes, and you can see it in the young bull on his picture. Um, they are shorter, but they've got plenty of strength about them. Now, they are smaller, but thankfully he's got enough production in Australia as well. He's plus 30 for fat and he's plus 18 for protein he was also a carving ease bull at 103 so this is a bull that needs some of your attention he's got really good health traits on the nordic system as well um yeah it's a bull you need to need to look at because if you say well look i do need to bring that stature down this is the bull and uh, we've decided to go with him because uh many people are saying that they want them smaller not weaker just shorter with still plenty of strength and last and you mean and he'll be efficient as well i think he's uh i think his uh feed saved index is about 119. yeah as well where breed average is 100 so yeah that's excellent so more less feed consumed positive uh, production you can't go wrong so I'll move on to, uh, unless uh, anything else to add from anyone there? No? Okay, Nader. I'd like to talk a little bit at Nader. He's been a very popular bull for us and he holds up on BPI. He's 414. He's 27 for fat in Australia and 13 for uh, protein. Nice overall type and memory at 104 and 103. Uh, good pin set to at 102. Uh, the front teats are nicely in at 110 stronger ligament and stronger fore and rear attachment both at 103 um, for other height and for attachment we can't forget daughter fertility i mean we all have daughter fertility these days but uh 
It's it's strong at 112, and he's an exceptional carving easel, suitable for maiden heifers, conventional or sexed. Uh, really love that dam. If you like a powerful cow, no one would argue that cow. She's got heaps of power, and uh, you can see it right there. And that udder's tucked right up, beautiful for rear udder. That's a that's you know that's the epitome of a powerful cow. So keep moving with uh, Nader. Next bull, uh, that's there's the Grand Dam, maternal great, the, the great Grand Dam. And just, just, well, just uh, anything there on those cows there, Hannah. Um, you probably know those cows reasonably well. Yeah, he is, uh, Nader is coming from a really strong cow family with uh, high producing cows. And uh, as we see in the picture, good looking cows uh, with a lot of strength and power, as you said, Eric. Uh, both of them, both the dam and the maternal grand dam is high producing, producing 13, 14,000 kilos of milk in average with uh, high solids, uh, above 4% fat and uh, around 3.6 uh, uh, protein and uh, uh, classified uh, 87, both of them. Very good looking cows. Excellent. Thank you. Beautiful. All right, we'll Moving on. Sorry, uh, we'd like to move on to heat. Yes, mate. I'm very conscious of the time here. Uh, look, heat just keeps banging away in Australia. Um, 4.57. This time last year or earlier back in the autumn, he was 4.27 and now he's 4.57. It just seems to keep going up on BPI. And he's been very good for us because not only is he carving these, but he's a very good production bull with close to 600 litres, 21 for fat and 31 for protein kilos. <coughs> so it's very good. And they're not too big. A lot of your pole bulls are quite tall and narrow where heat's uh, quite good for that because he's 101 for stature and 97 for chest. Now, that comes under the 7, 8. That comes under the 5. A lot don't like to see more than 5 points between chest and stature. So he's going to bring that stature down a bit and have enough strength for you. And thankfully, too, he's got longer teats, 101. <clears throat> and he pulls those rare teats out, 91. Um, I was talking to Peter Thurne from Data Gene, 91, 92. That's about our ideal for rare teat placement in Australia. So that's the bull to do it, a bit more teat length and widen those rare teats and uh, just keep using uh, heat. He's quite a gem in the PP homes I got seen. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, skills. I really like this bull personally. Unfortunately, we don't have him sex, but I do like him because... We bang on about health a lot here at Viking. Um, that's because all cows need it, and particularly in the Holstein in the early years, we're building health right up. And it's time to have bulls as well that put some leaders back in. Uh, the health's there to carry it, and we can punch some in. He's close to 700 litres of milk, uh, but he still is positive for components at 0.06 for fat and 0.06 for protein percent. I really do like skills because he is that moderate size cow with plenty of chest and body and they've got lovely udders and <clears throat> milking speed, longevity and temperament are all uh, one and a half deviations stronger. So just a lovely young bull um, that's not going to push your cows out too big and yet increase a lot of milk for you. As is the next bull, Sly PP, who uh, Sly, there again, 500 plus or 500 odd litres, that same scenario, but even better than uh, heat in that his stature on our system is only half a deviation taller, and yet his chest width is almost a deviation greater. So a pole bull that will punch them out a bit more rather than up, which is super. He does have a little longer teats. His daughter fertility is good. Temperament and milking speed are also very positive. Uh, half a deviation for temperament and a full deviation for milking speed. Great longevity scores on this bull. He flies under the radar a bit on BPI, uh, unfortunately, but uh, he, he in on our proof system, he's a very worthy PP um, Holstein, and I do like him a lot. Um, a bull that's done well for us is VH Friday. <clears throat> and we all like a Friday. Uh, <laughs> but he's soaring up the BPI rankings, 445. He's now got uh, 56 daughters in eight herds in Australia, 31 for fat and nine for protein. Uh, Pete, the farmers just love this bull. His daughter fertility is 115. So, you know, when you're getting a proven bull with good high fertility scores, it's something to turn your head. His memory is 106. 
uh, very good deep placement, uh, placement front 103 and rear 97. And his four and rear attachments are really strong, 107 and 107. And he's a bull. I've seen a lot of these daughters, and I really like them. The farmers like because they've got wonderful big wide muzzles, and it, and it carries right through the, the body. They've got really good chest width, beautiful spring of rib, and they stand nice and square on their legs. So while we still have some Friday, uh, it'd be excellent second round bull after sex semen or whatever because he's not sexed. Uh, to ensure that uh, you're carrying on with good genetics on that second time round. And I think that's about all I have to say on the Holsteins, Jim. I think just one comment on Friday, if I might. Uh, it's probably worth pointing out to people that uh, over the last, I guess, 12 months, as um, his daughters have been uh, coming through the system, his BPI continues to go up. I think he started, you know, mid-300s, Eric. Yeah. Um, and as the evidence comes in, um, it just gets stronger and stronger. And he's now sitting mid 400s, which, uh, as you say, quite rightly, a proven bull with a, with 115 fertility and increasing accuracy. Um, I, I think it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a, to me, it's a no brainer. It's a bull that, that delivers the goods um, every time. So well worth people taking a look. We'll, we'll move forward uh, to our Viking Jersey offering. Um, and uh, welcome back to the discussion, Peter Larson. And our first bull in the jerseys uh, is uh, BJ Hamlet. Peter. Uh oh. Peter's on mute. Eric. Until okay. Peter is, <laughs> I'll throw it back to you. Peter, if you can hear us, just start talking when you can hear us. Hamlet, this bull came here genomically, and I, I've got big hopes for this bull because um, he's look, his production's positive. He's a positive milk bull in Denmark, <clears throat> which will convert to negative milk bull in Australia eventually. But the components on the um, Danish jerseys are, are quite formidable. Um, you will for sure end up seeing that this bull will be a close to a percent greater for fat and That's what it is. six or seven percent for protein. And what makes him special is not only that, but he's got proven daughter fertility with um, close to 3,000 daughters. Daughter fertility sky high, as is poor health and other health. So um, it's it, it, he's a really good bull, and he's got super udders, a little large frame, uh, as in stature, 106, and good chest on him at 104. So Hamlet is a bull uh, that we've ran with, like I said, genomic and now proven, and uh, he's very popular, and I think he's going to be a wonderful bull. Are you with us yet, Peter? No. Uh, there's a Hamlet daughter right there. As you can see, the quality of the animal there, uh, I think it's hard to argue. That's a pretty nice heifer, and she's got lovely angularity on the rib too. See that rear rib running back, smacking her right in the rear hock. Beautiful width in the chest, lovely headed animal. And, and, and lovely vessel, a nice rear end on it. I think I can see Peter has rejoined us. The technology hasn't got the better of him. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Bob, you, hear uh, Bob, yeah. Yeah. you hear me now? Yes. yes, yes. yes. Good, good. Uh, uh, some comments to Hamlet. He's our top daughter proven in, in the Viking jersey lineup. Uh, a true sustainability profile uh, with um, lots of uh, milk solids. Uh, uh, along with volume of, of milk. Um, he's a breed leader for, for some uh, of the traits. He's a breed leader for, for daughter fertility. He's a breed leader for uh, persistency and for hoof health. But along with that, he, uh, he, he is also a, a one of the leaders in health and uh, also in, in memory. The, the dam of uh, Hamlet uh, was a high, high yielding cow average uh, of uh, four three or five day lactations was 8900 kilos with 6.2 and 4.5 in protein so so very very high um super uh, functional confirmation uh, and the bull that uh, we are very uh, proud of and uh, that breeders are very uh, very um, pleased with we have 2800 daughters in milk in uh, nordic countries and uh, 1,400 of those daughters are, school, are classified. Excellent. One of the Thank daughters. Oh. Yep. Sorry, Peter. Um, no. we'll, um, Move on. 
Sorry, moving on. Okay, so the next bull we would like you to talk about, Peter, is um, is a bull we've had for a little while and has uh, has now um, come up the uh, BPI ranking and with a very strong uh, data coming through, and that's VJ Gisley. Yes, uh, Gisley was also daughter proven and a little bit older than Hamlet. Um, is uh, also extremely popular in Nordic countries, but he has been extremely popular all over. At one stage, a couple of years ago, uh, when he started his career in US, uh, he had 109 sons uh, in the herd book in, in one year. Uh, so uh, not a lot of uh, size of sons will have more than 100 uh, uh, sons herd booked. Um, but uh, we have actually included him in Hall of Fame. And the reason for including a bull in Hall of Fame is that uh, he has some impact on the international jersey breeding. And um, that's uh, the reason for that. Um, his uh, profitability profile, he's uh, not uh, a bull that that breeds uh, the, the world's strongest uh, uh, show type confirmation, but he breeds very uh, functional type he uh, breeds very high volume of uh, both milk, protein, and fat. The dam uh, ended seven three or five days lactations with 9,300 kilos uh, average with 6.2 and 4.5 in protein. We have several sons, we have several grandsons, and we have just started to use the first grand-grandson of Gisleb, uh, BJ Gonzo, he's called. Yes, that's more or less it. Okay. One of, yeah. one of the daughters. I'd just like to add a little bit on him myself because he's gaining yeah. a proof in Australia. And as you saw on the uh, what was written there, he's rocketing up the BPI rankings. He's got 78 daughters and 11 herds down Australia, which gives him a production proof. And he's 29 for fat and 15 for protein uh, with whopping percentages. <clears throat> His daughter fertility is positive at 103 and the farmers like them because temperament's 102 and likability 102 uh, and that's moving up as well so you know gizlev uh, he's a bull with with very good farmer satisfaction and i could quite easily see a second run on this bull and some nice thoughts and, and not only uh, the sons have been doing good sons grandsons grand grandsons but uh, also daughters and this is a good example uh this uh, gizlev daughter uh, on the slide here, uh, she's called uh, now Hauga Gislev Gide. She scored uh, excellent 93. She's the dam of Nibiru, uh, a newly daughter broom bull in the, in um, uh, Wacking Genetics. Uh, so uh, we have included a lot of uh, daughters as well. Actually, right now we are trying to limit the impact of Gislev Genetics in our breeding program because it uh, has been so dominating uh, so that we, we need to take uh, care of inbreeding levels and, uh, and then try to limit it a little bit. But he will be out across to nearly all in Australia. Um, so you have a huge advantage now. Well, and it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention as, as the, the one responsible for all things commercial here, we have a reasonable stock of semen um, and uh, he is available sexed and conventional but the bull is deceased and uh, so while we're talking about his impact there's plenty of scope for for him to to get more usage here in australia and um but it is a limited opportunity as i say with the bull being deceased we'll we'll rock on uh, to our next bull uh, gentlemen and that is vj jojo okay well i can drop a bit in there jojo as peter was talking about is out of a gives left cow but uh, congratulations, Peter. I guess you'd be responsible for the mating because not only have you maintained Gisler's wonderful production, but you've produced a son here that has a wonderful health profile with daughter fertility and other health, super milking speed and temperament and lovely frame jerseys, being a little turler and still maintaining chest and body. And uh, But not only that, the main thing is you've really put some udders under this bull with Jojo at a total udder score of 1.5 deviation stronger. And uh, the traits are all really, really good. Uh, udder support's 117. The, the teat placement, the teat length and thickness, it's excellent. He's been a wonderful bull here in Australia, and I really look forward to his proof. Do you have anything to add to that, Peter? 
No, uh, he's been a wonderful football here as well, and he's extremely popular. Uh, he has kept selling all through his career. Um, we expect him to be daughter in, in November. Looking forward to that. Uh, so far, we have 50, 52 daughters in milk, uh, but not enough to have him proven here in August. So we will have to wait until November. But looking forward to it. Well, the next one I think you'd like to say a bit about because not only we have Gizlev and now Jojo out of the Gizlev Dam, but we've got Jabra at Jojo's son. And I'm excited about this bull because he's very similar to Jojo and with the super udders, super health profile, udder health is fantastic at getting up towards two deviations stronger for mastitis resistance. But you've really, uh, really uh, stoked, as I'd say, some milk into this bull with a big milk index over there of 121, and that excites us. We, we love that because your jersey components can really carry um, a, a lot more milk, and he will still have very strong components here, although he's got the milk with him and a wonderful temperament. You've got more to add to that, I would say, Peter? Yeah, you're right, Eric. Uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, JoJo sons, uh, and the Rita Jabra is definitely the highest ranking and uh, chopping our... Um, our active science list at the moment. Um, normally I classify or promote the bulls in, in, in kind of profiles, uh, profit, uh, profitability, uh, sustainability. Here you have a very complete bull that can fit into more or less all the profiles. Uh, he has the production, as, as you mentioned, of uh, milk solids, but also the volume uh, together with the, with the, the, the milk solids. He's got the health, he's got the, the fertility and longevity. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, uh, has Peter disappeared? Uh oh. Yes, his microphone's turned off on him. Okay. Well, I'll go on you with. Little gremlins there, but you carry on there, Eric. Yep. I'll go on with Durant, uh, and he features, Gislev features again here. Uh, he's out of a Gislev cow. Durant's been in Australia and he's gaining a proof here with 40 daughters in six herd and he's coming up quite nicely at the moment with 23 of fat and seven of protein. Uh, daughter fertility is very good at 104 and he also has got very strong udder confirmation in the Danish proofs and very high in daughter fertility and very satisfying temperament and milking speed. So that's a bull we've had for a while and he's good value here. Uh, so he's an excellent bull you should consider for second round uh, matings to still gain quality animals, I would say, in, in, in VJ Durant. And I think you know, important to point out, 291 BPI is a very strong BPI on a bull that, uh, that has been there for some time and uh, yeah. uh, is gathering the data. So that's a, that's a really strong position. Yeah. Uh, and and booming right along, uh, I think we have next is Nickus, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, a milk sire with very tidy udders and great teeth placement, boost herd health and longevity, ideal rare placement. Uh, there again, daughter fertility, udder health, all positive. Uh, good total udder scores at 110, and he will bring those rare teats out uh, by close to a deviation, which is where you really do want them to be. He's uh, chested 111, a deviation, uh, half a deviation stronger than his stature. So there'll be quite uh, good strong jerseys with good milk and a good health profile. So I'd like to move to Conscious of Time again. Dandy, a proven sire again, uh, the final jersey bull. Dandy, he's a bull that I'm very interested in, and I think we've got some daughter pictures there as well. There's a daughter in the... Uh, in the field there. Danny's a bull I like because he's a positive production bull, not huge production, but positive, uh, good temperament. Um, he's a bull that uh, I really like because he's really put some power in the jersey. Statue's 117, which is 1.7 deviations stronger, but his chest is 2.2 deviations greater. And you can see a, a, a fair bit of width in the front end of that cow, not only the front, but the rear, nice wide thurls. Plenty of room for the udder that you see there. Um, a rare teat placement's ideal at 91. Really nice longer teats and thicker teats. And uh, a good rump angle, so a bit of slope to the rump and very wide through the rear end. So he's a real bull, proven bull. He's got uh, 2,500 daughters in his proof. 
And uh, I call him the power jersey because there's nothing quite matches this bull to if you want to get some oomph into your jersey, he's the man. So that's me, Peter. I don't know if you're back with us, but if uh, if not, that's the end of my jersey presentation. Thanks, Jim. Well done, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Um, and, uh, yeah, we do seem to have a few technical gremlins there with Peter, and uh, it's unfortunate <laughs> that those in head office have the technical gremlins, isn't it? Um, I also note, uh, as we, we uh, are at the end of our jersey uh, discussion, uh, there are a number of people uh, that are using the, the chat and asking a few questions, and Darren's been very diligent there, um, providing some some answers to that. So please, uh, we do encourage everybody, if, it, if there are any questions or, or things we may have missed, please um, uh, reach out through that chat. The final uh, piece here is uh, also just, to remind you. Uh, Jim, can I just, uh, I've just got a, just got a question, um, and I'll, I'll put this to Eric, um, just about how we're calling uh, Dandy uh, a wide strong bull when his Australian data shows his low 90s for chest muscle, etc. Yes, well, maybe you might like to go with that one, Jim, about the data uh, calculations. You might be better to talk about that. Look, we, we're, we're working uh, on our jerseys using the higher accuracy um, type classifications that we get uh, from Denmark, um, where there's just uh, so much more data. Um, so that's uh, in, in answer to, uh, the, to that lady's question. Uh, we're referring there to the Nordic proof. Um, um, and in, in this situation, we, we do need to err towards where there is the, the strength of data, the, the reliability of, of actual uh, uh, data, um, when uh, at the moment on his Australian numbers, um, there's just not enough evidence. And, and simply in the Jersey evaluation here in Australia, we're diligently working as hard as we can to get more and more classification of jerseys uh, from the Viking team to help build the reference population with uh, Viking jersey data. Um, the Viking jerseys um, don't uh, seem to report terribly well uh, within the type of valuation generally uh, in Australia. Um, and hence, uh, but again, that's based on very, very limited evidence. So we're working very hard to get more evidence into the data gene reference population so that becomes more accurate. <coughs> but uh, at the moment, we do refer mostly to Nordic data um, where we have that um, the volume of information. I hope that, that makes sense. Um, we are right at the end of our time, um, and I will just make, uh, uh, I just flashed them up a moment ago. I will make a quick mention of our Danish blues. Uh, we are uh, enjoying uh, a lot of success with these Danish blues, and I think everyone in the team <clears throat> has customers who um, have, have started to get calves. Um, they are, the, the thing we like with these uh, Danish blues, people ask what's the difference between a Danish blue and a, a Belgian blue, and I flippantly say it's their postcode. But it's more than that. In the Danish Blue program, there has been uh, years and years of um, effort uh, in uh, calving ease. There is no animal allowed to remain in the breeding program uh, born by caesarean, and that's quite a significant difference in the Danish population of blue cattle. Um, so these calves are now being born um, early. They're being born easy. They've got tremendous vigour and, uh, and plenty of shape and, and scope uh, for growth. Um, right from the get-go. So customers have been very happy. They're $15 uh, conventional semen. And um, uh, I guess that's been another success story for us, uh, uh, Eric and Darren, if you had any comment there. Um, but they they uh, do seem to be pleasing customers as we go through. Yeah, I'd like to add, people who have used them have really gone strong on them, uh, on a lot of our clients. And our last shipment was sold out before it even got here because the the sale value of them has been quite outstanding and, and even compared to uh, angus i've got some good stories i don't have time to tell here but uh, it's the short gestation the uh, a lot of people look at those and go oh i'm not going to put those on the cows they will kill them it's quite the opposite you've got to remember these have been developed for dairy cows the the you know um so the short gestation the um and the, the, i believe they're wonderful to rear very good temperament and suckle extremely well and uh, any farmers that have got them, I haven't heard one that said, well, I, I wouldn't use those again. They're all actually going, well, that's all I'm going to use. So they uh, really have been a success story for us. I know it's early days, but we've got enough out there. And 
you don't they're not born with those great big rumps on them that that develops after weeks several that's weeks right of, of birth so they're born quite normal looking uh, so don't worry about that they have been developed exclusively for use on dairy cows in denmark we have uh, people using them here on jersey cows no problems red cows holsteins no problems all reports of super super calving ease and uh, vigorous uh rearing like i said so they they have been wonderful yeah, i just uh, i just like to really quickly chime in on that one um i with the with the danish blues i put them over my mother's cows mum's 79 she turns 80 in february um i don't live near the farm she's on the farm by herself and in the last two years she's had no trouble with anything so and she rears everything so um if uh yeah if my 80 year old mother can do it with no problems i'm sure a dairy farmer can do it <laughs> that, that's, that's a testimonial that we weren't expecting darren thanks for that that's fantastic and uh good on your mum good on mum look i uh, we are way out of time and i would really like to thank the whole team for your participation and your comments particularly Hannah from Sweden, Peter over there in Denmark with a few technical issues, but thank you so much for uh, your assistance. Thank you to everyone who stayed on right through uh, the presentation tonight. Uh, we don't want to hold people up tonight with the with a long drawn out webinar because there apparently is a bit of a soccer game going on. So um, without further ado, I just remind you there is a 10% discount on orders that are received to our orders at vikinggenetics.com.au email address by noon tomorrow thursday so uh, if, uh, if you've seen something tonight if you if you want some danish blues for an old relative um please get that order in uh, on the email as quickly as you can uh, tomorrow morning we'd like to thank everybody for your time we appreciate time is precious particularly when the matildas are going to beat the uh, the poms so uh, we thank you all for your participation and we wish you all a very good evening thank you and good night